my mobile podcast setup for iPad users, USB-C, and Lightning. So everything you need to know for podcast beginning setup hardware, well, let's talk about it. I have two iPads. I'll have all the affiliated things we talked about linked in the video description, but one iPad is filming for video podcast, and the other one is my reference to monitor my levels. So that way I don't have to have anything in my ears. You could use a pair of IEMs or headphones I'll have my favorites linked in the video description, but Sennheiser IE800s and Clips X6Is are my favorite. And then my budget-friendly pick is Apple's EarPods, not the AirPods, not the new AirPods third generation, but the wired ones. I have the Lightning ones for connecting to a Lightning iPad. Also around Lightning iPads, I have Apple's camera connection kit adapter because that way I can power it and then have the USB-C on this side to plug it into one of my USB-C dongles so I can connect all my gear up. And then I also have Apple's one. This one's the Intech one, and this one's the Apple multi-port adapter. Tip, if you're doing this by yourself, get one of these. These are a Bluetooth remote. I just have the Joby one. And so that way when you click it, it's you can have it sync to multiple devices so you can have it be the exact time. So you don't have to worry about syncing issues. Or you can of course do the loud clap and see the waveform when you're podcast editing on your iPad. I'll have videos on that. Earmuffs are great if you're in a noisy environment and you're trying to either edit podcasts on your iPad or something like that. It blocks out a lot of the background room noise. Is better than active noise canceling headphones in many regards when paired with like an IEM or something like that. And then quarter inch jack adapter so I can either monitor while I'm recording auditorily or I can plug in a shotgun microphone if I want to have podcasts with people that don't want to have to get wired up or don't have XLR microphones. This is only $20 and it has 90% of the performance of the Rode Pro Plus shotgun microphone. I also have found it's a good idea to have a backup audio recording. So I have a couple of these. These are only $20. I'll have my favorite lavalier microphone linked in the video description. The Boya BYM lavalier microphone, and it can do TRRS and TRS signal because it has the two AM3 prongs in it. So you just flip the switch. And the only thing is tip if you're using it in mobile mode for connecting to an iPhone or an iPad or something like that that's lightning based and you don't have a dongle where you have a TRS to TRRS adapter or TRS to TRRS adapter depending on if you're plugging it into a DSLR or audio interface or plugging in directly into your iPad or iPhone. Make sure that you have the battery in the Boya. Make sure that it's full. It lasts for months but make sure if you're doing something every couple of months replace it. You need somewhere to store all this footage and audio and edit off of because you can edit off of external drives from your iPad Pro and your iPad. These are both USB-C, but this one's the budget podcasting choice for storage. It's the Samsung T7. It's well known as a good value, but if you're looking to splash out on a, something that's Thunderbolt because the new iPads have Thunderbolt, so it makes editing so much smoother and this has a much bigger thermal envelope. So I won't go into that because that's not important, but I'll have other videos that I talk about these. But this one's IP67 dust and water resistant. This one, you can pretty much go anywhere. I'm currently at the beach, so this one you could throw in the water and not have anything issue with it. It's crush resistant, all sorts of stuff. But this is a lot more expensive than this. This is also low power, so you can edit off of it on lightning based iPads or iPhones. Then of course we have power. You're gonna need some way to power. I'm in a place where I have power, so I have one of these plugged into the wall a lot of times, but you can just power it right off your iPad or iPad Pro. But battery bank, if you're using a lightning based iPad and a camera connection kit adapter, that's super helpful because that way you don't have to worry about external power and power outages and all sorts of stuff and be like, Arr! if you don't have an iPad for monitoring and you want to record things and things like that, use a magic trackpad because that way you don't have to keep on getting up to do anything you want. You can have it sync to your Mac or your iPad or your iPhone and because it's Bluetooth. USB-C to lightning cable. This is for the Apple's camera connection kit adapter, which we already talked about. And then Thunderbolt cable. If you are using an Apple Silicon MacBook Pro with Thunderbolt or a iPad Pro with Thunderbolt, or it also works as USB-C, but as a general rule of thumb, I try and carry at least one Thunderbolt cable because Thunderbolt 3 slash Thunderbolt 4 can do USB, but USB cables can't do Thunderbolt. 
If you're only carrying one or two cables, carry two Thunderbolt cables. They're a little expensive, so it's an investment. So I understand if you go with just regular one. If you're going with a USB cable, I would just recommend Apple's two meter one. You can go with a third party, but I've never had an issue with Apple's charging slash data cables where I've had some calamities happen in the past. And you don't want to have to go up to somebody and be like, oh, sorry, we have to reshoot this because the cable malfunctioned or something. I can't believe for I almost forgot this. This is important. You're going to need a microphone. I use a Rode Pod mic, which is an XLR microphone. XLR microphones provide more flexibility and generally better quality and is considered the professional standard for audio recording and mixing. I'm using the Rode Pod mic. Most of the people you listen to who do podcasts use this microphone. And then I have the desktop stand holding up the microphone. You can also use like a C stand or something else, but I'm in a nice absorbent area where I have lots of absorbent things so that I don't get a lot of reverb. And so that's important. But with a dynamic microphone, you don't have to worry about phantom power, but make sure that you're at least a finger and thumb away. So it's like hang loose, man, but it's thumb, mouth, thumb, mouth. And I'll have linked in the video description my video on beginner's guide to connecting an audio interface to your iPad to watch next. But light is important. If you're not somewhere where there's good lighting, this is super helpful. It's an Aperture Amaron FL light. It works great as a fill light or in a pinch can be used as a key light. And it's very inexpensive and budget friendly and it'll last you a long time and has really good CRI and can do tungsten and daylight. So it's really flexible for matching your lights in your wherever you're, whatever environment you're in. Because I currently have two lamps going, but then I also have a, another light right over here. Oops, right over here. That's the filling in the extra light if you don't have the luxury of using window light because natural lighting is nice, but it changes really quickly. So if you're wanting to do podcasting, learning how to set up artificial light is important skill. Stay tuned for a video I'll have on that. What is something that you want to know about podcasting? So if you have any questions about podcasting, leave them in the description below. I would be happy to answer them. And check out this video about connecting your iPad with USB-C to an audio interface. Or check out this playlist, which is my everything audio playlist. Don't forget to like and share because it really does help. And I'll see you in the next video.